Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to make a geode bath bomb. If you've never seen a real geode rock, it's a hollow rock that has crystals in it. They come in a variety of sizes, shapes, and colors, so it's completely up to you how realistic or unrealistic you want to make them look. Geodes can be a little time consuming because they need to be done in two stages. First you need to make the shell, so let's go through that. Here I have my mix ready to go. I've also got a little bath bomb dust or bath bomb mixture that I've dried out off to the side to be added randomly, which I'll explain in a bit. I'll show you how to mold two different sizes for geode bath bombs. As you can see, both of these molds are cheap acrylic Christmas ornament molds. I'll start with the larger mold, placing the mixture in and compact it against the side. You may also notice that I didn't apply cyclomethicone. I could have, but I've never had a problem with these bath bombs coming right out. If you have issues, then you can definitely use cyclomethicone. Continue to add mixture and compact all the way up the sides of the mold, but don't fill in the middle. You want the inside to look like a bowl. You may notice that my mixture is speckled with colorant, which was intentional. I actually like the speckled look with these geodes. You can color yours however you choose. During this process, if you'd like, you can add a bit of bath bomb dust right up against the mold to create a color stripe on the outside. This can add a great little pop of color to the outside of the bath bomb, but don't add too much dust because it could make a buffer in your mixture and then it might not hold together. Add just enough to get a patch of color and then place more mixture on top of it. Continue to compact it until the bath bomb is somewhere around a half inch thick. During the second stage, you'll be handling the bath bomb a lot, so you don't want a thin and frail bath bomb. For this same reason, you'll probably want to build up the top edges to at least a quarter inch thick. Now for the little mold. The process is exactly the same, but on a smaller scale. I sold these little ones as a set of five one year for Christmas and they did really well. Again, you can place the bath bomb dust along the way. Once you like the thickness and the mixture is all compacted, you can get the bath bomb out right away by turning the mold over in one swift motion and bringing it down on a hard surface. You want to do this somewhere where your bath bombs can stay and dry without being handled, like on a cookie sheet or something that you can move to set out of the way. Allow these shells to dry completely for the full 24 to 48 hours. And that's the end of the first stage. For this demonstration, I have a bath bomb shell that I made a couple of days ago so that it would be ready to go. And that brings us to the second stage in the process. For this stage, I've got three different sizes of salts as well as melted coconut oil and melted cocoa butter. In the past, I've always just used coconut oil, but for this demonstration, I wanted to compare it with cocoa butter. Since each one sets up hard, both the oil and the butter can be used as a glue. You'll just want to use one of the two for your geodes though. Next, I'll add some glittery silver and gold mica to the salts. They don't need to be completely covered in the mica, just enough to give it some color and sparkle. Now we're ready to glue the salt. Use a spoon to scoop some coconut oil out of the bowl and pour it carefully on the curved inside of the bath bomb, doing your best not to get it on the outside of the bath bomb. For this first part, I usually start with my smallest grain of salt. Put the salt wherever you have oil, gently push it into the oil, and then add more oil on top of it. Here I'll do the same with the cocoa butter, just for comparison. I don't know if you can see it, but the cocoa butter is pulling a little in the center of the bath bomb. If that happens to you, just gently rotate the bath bomb to spread it to other areas. Continue adding oil or butter, then salt, then more oil and butter until most of the surface of the bowl is covered with this small grain salt. As you can see, it doesn't look like much at this point, and that's okay. You have to work in layers with geodes, and with each layer, it will look better. Once this layer is done, I'll stick it in the freezer for a couple of minutes to harden up the oil or butter, or both in my case. Then pull it out and do the same process again, but this time with the mid-sized green salt. Then repeat the process again, placing the salt wherever you like the best. I usually like the largest grain of salt to sit near the center, but I'd love to see what you do with your geodes.
After all of the layers are done, you may want to paint the crystals a bit with mica. Add 90% or higher rubbing alcohol to make mica paint. I'm using both silver and gold mica here. You can use a paintbrush to add a little more silver sparkle to the salt crystals or perhaps a gold mica ring around the whole bath bomb. Another great idea you may want to try is to do two similar halves and place them together like a round stone. Then when your customer opens up their geode, they see the beautiful crystals inside. As far as my comparison of the cocoa oil and cocoa butter goes, I felt like both of them performed about the same, except when it came to the biggest salt crystals. The coconut oil didn't hold the large salt pieces in place very well. So if you're working with large salt crystals like this, you may want to use cocoa butter. And if you're wondering where the largest salt came from, I got it from makeyourown.buzz and it's their coarse sea salt. As you can see, geo bath bombs are a little more involved, but completely doable. And you don't have to have three different salt sizes. And you shouldn't be using both coconut oil and cocoa butter. Just pick one. And in reality, you don't even need to work in layers. If I was making 20 geodes, I would definitely simplify my process. But there's so much you could do with these, especially with different crystals and colors. And of course, there's a million different things you can do with bath bombs in general. That's where my online course called Pro Bath Bombs comes in handy, where you can watch nearly 100 videos that go over every aspect of making bath bombs from start to finish, getting creative with them, and how to create a successful business selling them. So be sure to visit probathbombs.com where I have a free 45 minute training and I give you my top 10 secrets for making incredible bath bombs and how to actually make money with them. I also give you an inside look at my full bath bomb course. So check out the links in the description if you want to improve your bath bomb skills and or your business. And lastly, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this and other bath bomb tutorials. And if you have any further questions, please let me know.